Who is EquiSearch? What is EquiSearch? Well, I didn't choose to start EquiSearch. I think it chose me, you know, and uh, I'm one person that knows what these families go through. I mean, my own daughter disappeared when she was 16, and police said she was a runaway, and we could not get any help, and 17 months later, her body was found in a field, and four girls have been found there, still unsolved. I think I remember every minute of that 17 months of helplessness and hopelessness and loneliness. And uh, after Laura's body was found, I kind of made a promise to God and Laura I'd never leave a family alone if there's anything I could ever do. So I helped out a little bit with another search organization. And then uh, one of their directors asked what I was going to do with my horses. I said, love my horses. And they said, why don't you uh, start a mounted search and recovery? So uh, we started that, with just, and, uh, and I joke about just a bunch of hillbillies on horses. And Emily literally was, we was pretty successful early on, and then people would come to our meetings and say, I don't have a horse, but i got an ATV. I'd like to become a member. I don't have a horse, but I've got a boat, and I'm a diver. I don't have a horse, but I'm a pilot, and i got my own airplane. What can we do? So over the years, I think we've literally generated more resources than, than most law enforcement agencies in the country. And, I'm not going to get rotator cuff or pat myself on the back. I mean, we, we've really, really been blessed. We've uh, never charged a family a dime. Many families have actually tried to hire us. We say, we've already paid the ultimate cost. We've got to miss some love fun. So as of two weeks ago, we, we actually located our 348th deceased victim, and, and many of them would have never been found, found many alive that would have been dead. Nathan's wife called us and asked for our help and of course she was pretty distraught and i told her we'll do anything we can do to help but we don't get involved unless law enforcement approves us coming in and it's up to her to call law enforcement so she called law enforcement and then the lead investigator called and he said we can use all the help we can get so um we i brought just a couple people over in the beginning just to kind of feel out the area see what we was really looking at and, and whether we had really had any resources that could be an asset to a search tell us if you can walk us through the timeline there's a lot of confusion as to what's going on if you can walk us through a timeline. well you know the the timeline is that nathan came here on a uh, on a business trip to meet with another contractor on a, on a job that they were bidding they went to a basketball game and then I know from the time he left the uh, the Irish pub until the next time he, that he was physically seen by witnesses and everything it was like three hours. So, you know, from uh, from the Irish pub to the motel is a block away, and uh, from the Irish pub until where he was seen down the, basically at the Greyhound station. You know, it's probably a 15 minute walk. So, you know, what happened in between? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows. Even if detectives know, they're probably not not sharing it for one reason or another, and, and that's fine. I, I actually told them if you got information you want us to search, don't tell me the reason why, because if anything leaks, it's not going to come for up from our end. We're just not going to lose credibility and second guess my own self. What is that three hour window? What happened in between from? when he left the, the pub to the Greyhound bus station. Okay, what about all the ATM transactions? We've heard various stories. I've got uh, copies of the ATM transactions, and I believe there was one that was just checking a the balance. There was another one when he took some money out. Uh, then there was a couple other ones just on checking balances and then there was a couple other ones taking the money out none of them were large amounts of money whatsoever so any motive on what and and I talked to his wife and and, uh, and I says how many credit cards did he have how much cash did he have and he had very little cash on him and he only had two cards one was a debit card and one was a business credit card and of course we know that his debit card has been used we uh, certainly anticipate and I think we got every reason to believe I believe there's evidence stating that yes somebody else used it uh, the credit card the company credit card was still uh, 
accounted for. His, uh, where his phone was found, pretty close to the Irish pub, it compared to where his billfold was found, which was closer to the uh, Greyhound bus station. You know, there, there's a pretty good distance. Um, we talked to a lady at the bus station, actually talked to him, and um, he apparently was having some confusion how to get back to the motel, and she said, well, give me your phone, and I'll go ahead and, and put the directions in there, and he said, well, I lost my phone. So we, we know that he talked to somebody there. What time was that? That was roughly 2.30 in the morning. So again, that's three hour window or almost four hour window from the time that he lost the pub and until uh, he talked to that person at the bus station. Okay. So what happened from there is uh, in that four hour window, certainly unclear. Uh, what happened after is unclear. Uh, after the reward was put out, their calls came in and I think were pretty, pretty credible also on, uh, let's just say, a person of interest. And again, I don't want to get too involved in the investigation, but the, uh, the outcome doesn't look good. I mean, I've been on many, many searches in 42 states, 11 different countries, and... and uh, this outcome doesn't look good whatsoever. Let's go back to the person you were speaking with at the Greyhound bus station. What else was she able to give to you guys? Well, she was given some information to us that probably don't need disclose again. That's kind of part of the investigation. I know law enforcement has talked to her. I do understand. There were possibly additional ATM interactions at 5.30 in the morning? There were. We actually seen where that transaction took place, and uh, you know, and kind of what we're getting now is kind of a three-hour lapse also between the transaction. I'm gonna say right around two thirty to almost five thirty. So, what happened in that three-hour period of time? I think, without going into detail, I think something, I think something happened in that three-hour period of time. Is it known if the 5.30 transactions in the morning were Nathan or what? No. it's unknown at this point? It's not Nathan. Okay, but there were additional transactions at 5.30 in the morning. There was one other transaction at 5.30 in the morning. I've literally got a list of all the bank statements in the highlight areas. So there really weren't that many. There was several of them in there that was doing like a checking for the account balance. But as far as actually withdrawing the money, there weren't really that many. Are there cameras on these ATNs, though? There, there are. They, um, you know, I think detectives kind of know who was using them. Okay. That just they, that information is being close, kept close to the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah, I think that, yeah. Okay. I know yeah. a lot of people. There are a lot of people out there who are sitting here asking things, which a lot of things cannot be dealt to the public yet because it's part of an ongoing investigation. Right, right. and that's something, certainly something that we're, we don't want to jeopardize, you know, we want to, we want to be an asset on this and not a liability. You know, Nathan has got a beautiful wife, has got a child. Um, Nathan's wife tells the baby when the baby says every day, where's daddy, where's daddy? His wife said, you know what, she's lost, he's lost right now, honey, but he'll be coming home. So. That wouldn't even get me a little bit choked up. I know that Nathan had been sober for a long time, was working on his recovery and came over and, and I know what that's about. I've been there my own self. So uh, fortunately it's many, been many, many years since I, since I have drank. But you know, I know how devastating that, that can be and I know the terrible choices that people make. Uh, so I certainly can't judge them. Recovery's difficult at best so a lot of questions have come up about cameras in downtown cameras in atms cameras at the courtyard i know you guys released some of those pictures at the courtyard marriott can you delve into a little more about what all cameras have been able to reveal about nathan's whereabouts i think the cameras that i've seen have basically revealed uh, nathan walking Nathan at the bus station. 
I didn't see ones at the Marriott my own self. We got a wife and child that, that want daddy home, preferably alive, but if not alive, uh, please help us, please work with us. And we need the city to come together to get the information and, and get him home. He came here to uh, look at a job and help support his family and unfortunately something went wrong.